Everyone I know. 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 Welcome to Everyone I Know, the podcast where we argue about the mundane. We're here in Troy, rocking on the river, the Hudson River. We saw the Hudson River today. Saw actually. the Hudson River today. It was dirty and polluted, so clean up your act, Hudson River. I'm here with my lovely producer, Brendan. Hello. And my brother, Chris. What's going on, guys? We're not doing any ads this week. No, we're not going to. No, we're not. So we're going to jump in and just introduce our illustrious guest. we got another big boy guest today. Today we have the stand-up comedian, the podcaster, the man from California. California. (laughs) (laughs) Not originally, but right now, Ryan Singer. What's up, Ryan? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. I've never been called illustrious before. This is exciting for me. You've got luscious hair, and yeah, I would much... say your hair is illustrious. I'm yeah. looking at it right now. Yeah, we, were just, <laughs> we just Google image searched you, <laughs> so we had something to look at. And if you can't tell, folks, we're doing this through Skype. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah. yeah, we're not actually looking at Ryan, but we can hear him through the We're internet. looking at a static image of Ryan. <laughs> and It looks very happy, so... I think we're doing pretty well. <laughs> I wrote a couple of notes down for the intro here, and one of the things I wrote down is short curls now, miss long curls. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, girlfriend agrees with you on that. Um, I got my hair chopped because it was it just became, I mean, I have to thank my mom's father, you know? I mean, I guess that's where they say typically you can see how you're going to look when you're older. Right, right. And, he, and he, was, he lived to be 89 years old and had this, like, glorious white like afro um (laughs) that was just like stark white like the snow and um but it got to the point where for me like i like i do enjoy having like the longer hair but i feel like it's kind of more my choice (laughs) yeah yeah it is nice i don't take that for granted um but then it's just like it just hangs out it just ends up everywhere uh like a dog like when you have like (laughs) dog that sheds and it's just like it just gets to be too much um so it's it's nice having a little uh having it you know and i'm also 42 years old maybe i should clean up a little bit <laughs> um so thank you again for coming on ryan yeah, yeah uh, seriously thanks man new album is out uh it's, it's awesome yeah we, will, we listened to it recently very funny uh, it's called free love it was released on october 12th and ryan you did something very peculiar with this you released it for free What's that? All yeah. About? Um, well, first of all, thanks for listening to it. I'm glad you liked it. And um, awesome, the uh, yeah, I wanted it to be free. And, you know, iTunes will not do free. They won't let you put something for free on iTunes, which, you know, I guess makes sense when you when you realize that we live in the capitalistic blood sucking world that we live in, you know, especially with like a, a conglomeration like iTunes. Oh, yeah. Um, and the iTunes store, from what I've been told, is um, soon to be a thing of the past anyway, uh, where like they're just going to be taking their whole iTunes store down. Um, oh, interesting. Because everything, everything is going the way of streaming and stuff like that. But, but um, yeah, and Amazon will not – I was told Amazon was going to put it up for free, but um, – Last I checked, it was even more expensive than iTunes because uh, we went as cheap as we could go, which was five bucks on iTunes because I wanted it to be on Apple Play and all that stuff. Right, right. But, uh, but it's definitely free. Uh, I've, I've been trying to, like, make sure everybody understands that. So, like, you can just go to my website and download it yep. from Google Drive or Dropbox, um, depending on which uh, one you like better. Yeah, I, I, uh, um, I think it actually is on Google Music because that's what I use uh, for my streaming. And it's everything on Google Music is free, so yeah, if, if, yeah awesome. You got to be uh, uh, subscribed to it, but yeah, you can also listen to it on Spotify. Um, yeah, definitely on Spotify, on Pandora, on all that stuff. Yeah, you did the same thing with the the last album you did too, uh, Immortal for Now. Didn't you release that one for free as well? That one was not free. Okay, but I mean, it was definitely on all the streaming sites. Okay. Um, you know, but uh, but that one was not free. That was the uh, I was on a different record label. Okay. Um, for that one. And so after I finished like the contract, uh, I did two, two records with stand up records. Mm-hmm. Um, I did my second and my third album with them. And then my third one or my fourth album, which this is my fourth album. I'm trying to keep it straight. <laughs> and, uh, but I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have to self release this one. Cause no record label is going to be on board with doing a free album. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, so then I talked to Dominic Del Benny, who used to uh, run the label over at Rooftop Comedy. Um, and then he went, they got bought by Auto 
Audible, and they were, he was so he was kind of running the comedy over at Audible for a while. But then he broke off. Uh, within the last year, I think he broke off and started his own label called Blonde Medicine. Okay. And and so I just happened to have a conversation with him on the phone one day because he's very like minded with me when it comes to. Um, like the vision of like what standup should be doing and, you know, where it's headed. And he loved the idea of giving away a free album. And so I ended up just, you know, so we kind of, it was like a perfect match in that way where, he, you know, cause he really loves the art of standup comedy and, and sure he needs to make money because now he's out on his own and it's the way he makes a living and he has right. got, you know, a family, but, um, but he gets it also. He's, he, you know, he's willing to take chances and, and, and risk, uh, certain things. Cause all the money's in streaming anyway. Right. Um, if, if people really were even interested in that kind of stuff, um, it's kind of behind the, the curtains of standup, but all the money a standup makes from their albums is, you know, whether it gets played on satellite radio, that's, you know, the big one. Mm-hmm. And then like Pandora pays a little bit, uh, but Spotify doesn't really pay shit. Yeah. Uh, Spotify kind of is, you know, it's fractions of pennies for plays, but Pandora takes care of you a little bit better. And then satellite radio, even better than that. But I don't know, sound exchange, which is like the company that like works for artists to get paid royalties. They just passed, uh, you know, they, they're do they're out there doing the good work, you know, like, so they just actually had a, a new bill passed in Congress. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw that. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I think even, uh, with, Within a couple of weeks ago, so to increase slightly the royalties that uh, you know musicians and artists and comedians and things like that will be getting paid. So that's that's good news, you know, um, <laughs> especially when we live in a free world. I mean, I'm a I'm a socialist, uh, communist kind of guy, you know. Um, You'll get along with my brother. Time, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I do, but at the same time, I do like to be able to, you know, make a little money doing yeah. what I love. Oh yeah, oh, you got to eat. Yeah, no doubt. And I'll tell you, like, I I'd, I'd love for. I just watched that um, when I was recording this album. I watched the Grateful Dead documentary on Amazon Prime called okay. Long Strange Trip. I oh, don't yeah. know if you've seen it, but it's amazing. And uh, I was like a Grateful Dead head fan, I, you know, a dead head or a fan. I wasn't like full fledged dead head, but like I was a huge fan ever since I was a kid. You and, had uh, you had some things that were tie dye and some things that were not tie dye. Not every, yeah. everything wasn't tie dye. Yeah, yeah, not everything was tie-dye. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I did have, like, Grateful Dead posters at, like, 13 on my wall. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got to see them in 1994 before Jerry died. And then I saw them last year with my buddy Dave Waite. We saw Dead & Company in Phoenix. We both happened to be, like, in the general area on the road separately. So we got together and uh, went and saw them. It was oh, amazing. Cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, and I was watching that documentary, and it's so incredible. Like, the weekend as I was recording... And uh, in the hotel, I would just stay up to like four in the morning watching this thing because it's like four or five episodes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, man, like this is the way to like it's art, you know, and I was like reinvigorated with this like like stand up comedy is art, man. And I'm like, I want like all of my I want an audience member to like film all of my sets. I don't care if I'm working on new stuff like I want to like wouldn't that be awesome to like at some point like be the grateful dead of comedy? I mean. <laughs> that's like such a, you know, arrogant thing to say, like, like I'll be the grateful dead of comedy. Like, I don't think I'm going to be the grateful dead of comedy, but like, wouldn't that be so cool? Well, just to Uh, be able to capture the essence of it, you don't need the debt, you know, the cult fan base, you know, but like to have the idea of people like, yeah, man, it's, it's for you. It's for entertainment. It's for your, it's so you chuckle. Yeah, exactly. So I don't really care if, um, I've taken the approach of like, I, I care not if anyone audio records my sets or video and posts it for free, like on there on Reddit or wherever they want to post it. I actually encourage people to do that with all of my sets if they want. And you know what? And if I get caught saying something, you know what? Guess what? I shouldn't have been saying it. I, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess some people are like, but you never know what you're going to say in the moment. I was like, I'm not worried about <laughs> I, I'm never worried about having like a Michael Richards meltdown. Like that's just. Yeah. You don't strike me as the type. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, there are things that happen in the moment that are like, wow, this is, that was a crazy thing, but I've never had a moment like that. So like, um, so I think that's pretty cool. I mean, a lot of comedians complain about that. Uh, you know, like, Oh, people are filming my, you know, filming sets. It's Mm -hmm. like, well, how many comedians are secretly filming people in public for their Instagram account or (laughs) 
Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's like, that's true. It's like, don't be such a hypocrite, man. Like, you can't just randomly film people in public for your content. Yeah. Um, and the argument is, well, you know, I make a living doing stand-up comedy. You know, I'm just filming these people being crazy <laughs> in public. It's like, no, to me, there's no difference. You're still secretly filming. And we live in the society of secret filmers. Yeah. And so it's like, pick a side, you know, don't be a hypocrite. Either you're for it or you're against it. So, um, I mean, you know, not everything has to be so black and white, but you, I think you get what I'm saying. Well, yeah. information wants to be free. That's where it, why, like, piracy was such a big thing when it, in, like, oh, the yeah. early 2000s. Like, you cannot actually keep people from getting stuff and learning stuff. You know, yeah. yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I remember my first album came out at the very end of 2008. It was like December 2008. So it was technically like 2009 when it came out. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what? I'll know I made it if it's on Napster. Hell yeah. <laughs> like if, if I can find like a link to my album, like an illegal download, oh, that's man. when I know that I, I make I'm, I'm actually, you know, making progress in this in this career. And that, you got a dedicated a dream, fan to like see yeah. your shit, you know, like, like somebody, somebody didn't just like, you know, pull up a, a, a stream or something like that. They actually went out of their way to search that out and find it, you know, nope. download it and take it. Yeah. 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 And like, I, I just love the idea of someone being like, Oh God, I, I really want to hear this guy's comedy, but you know, I, I don't have money, you know, like some 12 year old kid or something. And then right. boom, they, they, they get their hands on it. So to me that I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. And plus, you're uh, promoting back in those days. You're promoting very positive stuff, like how to get high without drugs. You know? Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, the idea of that was like, hey man, sometimes you don't have money, so like, uh, <laughs> you know, here's a way to get high without drugs. And and you know what? It still works to this day. That method. I gotta tell you. Um, okay, so you got a tour coming up. Uh, or you're on tour now. You're on tour now. I'm actually at home right now. You know what? This is fun. We could talk about this later. I, it wasn't my topic, but um, I'm actually later this afternoon. I'm going to Lake Arrowhead. I'm at home for okay. like another few weeks, but I'm going to Lake Arrowhead to go on a Bigfoot expedition. Oh, oh, hell yeah! Hell yeah! Not oh. a hunt, but like uh, to look for a Bigfoot <laughs> with a woman who has uh, seen them. And I say them because she saw plural uh, with her daughter on a hike in Lake Arrowhead where she lives. So me and my buddy Alex Mistretta, who's like a cryptozoologist kind of investigation kind of guy, um, are going to Lake Arrowhead to do an interview for my podcast. And then afterward, we're going to go. We're going to be in the mountains at night looking for Sasquatch, which is, you know, pretty terrifying. It's probably the scariest thing I've 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 like in reality I have done because there's lots of bears out there. And <laughs> she told me, she's like, if you own a handgun, you need to bring it. And I was like, <laughs> this is not what I want to hear before I, I go like for fun on a trip. You know what I mean? So, so, uh, my girlfriend's a little concerned, but I think we're going to be okay. Cause I'm there with people who have done this kind of thing at night yeah. before. You gotta get a, you gotta get bear spray. It looks like a fire extinguisher. It's huge. And, it, it, and it's like pepper spray for bears. <laughs> We used to we used to do a lot of hiking in the Adirondacks up in New York, and my father used to bring that with us when we'd go hiking. Yeah. And it looks legitimately like like a uh, fire extinguisher. Yeah. It's supposed to scare them away. I don't know if it works. I on do have Sasquatch, a though. small can. Yeah, I do have a small can, uh, like a small little handheld thing of bear mace. There you go. Um, so uh, that my mom got me years ago, just because I dro I was just driving to, around the country so much. And she, so she got me a can of bear mace plus one of those little hammers that breaks your window from the inside gotcha. Hell yeah. in case you drive into a lake. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a bear in your backseat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we drove into the lake because the bear got into your car. Right, right. You're like, bears yeah, yeah, can't yeah. swim. <laughs> <laughs> Should have so, been hauling yeah. so much trout. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Sasquatch. Oh yeah, should we should I, I we think, roll right yeah, into? Oh, do probably, you want to get your your yeah, dates yeah, out and just yeah, in get the front? Your dates out first, and then, then we'll go. Oh, okay, first yeah. Topic. Um, like uh, in November, I got uh, I'll be in Chicago this November, uh, or I guess next month, uh, depending on, on the 16th through the 18th at the Comedy Bar, um, and then I'll be in Denver, Fort Collins, Boulder. Um, that's like the 29th through like the 2nd of December. So the 29th of December. Uh, or November, excuse me, till the second. I don't uh, know the exact spots, and I'll be at my uh, my hometown club, Wiley's Comedy Club, uh, December twenty first and twenty second. 
uh, of December uh, before Christmas, doing some home shows. Very good. It's a good way to get in town for the for the holidays. Yeah, I always try to like you know pay for my ticket home. You know, <laughs> it's like and a tr- like, like a troubadour. Yeah, yeah, like cover the cost of some uh, Christmas gifts and uh, the plane the plane ticket if I can. Nice. Well, without further ado, we're moving on now to topic. There you go. Number one. Okay, I am topic one today. Um, and uh, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, here Ryan, I listened to your to your album, loved it. That was hilarious. Uh, two things stuck out for me in that in that uh, that album. Uh, first off, your, your love for milkshakes because I'm I'm right there with you. Um, when uh, uh when I'm hu- when I'm hung over, there's nothing better than an icy cold milkshake. And secondly, uh, uh the Sasquatch thing that we, you kind of alluded to in the beginning. Um, now. I want to talk about Sasquatch as a person, who he is, what he does, uh, how, how you think he would be like <laughs> like if you actually were to meet him. Like what uh, if you sat down yeah. for a beer with good old Squatch? <laughs> <laughs> but, but first, before we get into that, what type of milkshake do you think Sasquatch would enjoy? Oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, you know what? I'm like, I feel like there's, for some reason, I'm feeling like pine. Pine? <laughs> Yeah. You know, like a pine tree, like, you know, maybe he yeah. wants like a vanilla based uh, pine cone, <laughs> dirt, you know, so something that like, would look like a pine cone, um, <laughs> you know, that's got that minty flavor yeah, yeah. Uh, that I that I that I conjure when I think of like, you know, you know, the evergreen trees. Yeah. So my guess would be like Girl Scout cookies, like thin mints, oh, like, blend so it in. Yeah. like you blend in some thin mints into maybe a good vanilla bean. Uh, ice cream. Um, I think Squatch would be all about, you know, some th- some thin mint milkshakes. <laughs> Dude, we gotta we gotta edit that out. That's a million dollar idea right there. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna sweep <laughs> through Brooklyn, all the crunchy folk, and be like, "You had this pine milkshake, bro." <laughs> it's the Squatch. <laughs> it's the Squatch, dude. It's the name of the shake. So, yeah, dude, I would I would be all about that. I mean, I was like microdosing milkshakes for a while. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like leading up to promo of the album, I was doing like seven milkshakes a day. So I was just like, I was making milkshakes at home for like seven days in a row. And it was like, it was too much, man. Like I was just like, it was amazing. But it was at the same time, it was just like, I couldn't, you know, there's it's, at some it's point, it's just like, this is too many milkshakes. You know what I mean? <laughs> too many milkshakes. Well, I, I, uh, I have a problem with, uh, with lactose. I'm, I was lactose intolerant when I was a kid. I'm still kind of am. So um, having a milkshake for me is a decision that I'm making for an entire day. <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's a nice little treat, but it's it's also it bites me literally in the ass. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. Uh, I get you 100% because the older I got, the more I realized that I'm no longer on good terms with lactose either. <sighs> and it's not, and unfortunately, it's not one of those things you can just like. Well, if I just do it for a week straight, my body will get used to it. No, no, no doesn't happen. No, no. So I had like a week. I had a straight week of, of just like really, you know, I was living the struggle, you know, like, but, (laughs) but it's one of those things where it's like a perfect example of like, why are the things that are so bad for us the best, you know, like, I love them so much and I can't stop myself from doing them, even though I know like (laughs) how painful this is going to be. And, uh, oh man, I'm getting like, so I think another way to look at it is almost like a monastic, like ascetic vibe. Like you're taking in the sacrament, which is the milkshake, <laughs> and then you're you're suffering for your God. Oh yeah, which is the cheese, g- cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my grandma, uh, you know, God rest her soul, she would be totally on board with that because she used to think all suffering brought her closer to God. So like, she never complained about anything in her life. It was amazing, but like. The uh, idea of suffering, it reminds me of the first, uh, what was that, the first Dan Brown movie um, uh, based on da his Vinci book? Code. Uh, da Vinci Code. Wasn't there that guy who was like whipping himself? Yeah, self-flagellation. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, the self-flagellation. Like, that's basically what, you know, you know, drinking a milkshake is. <laughs> like, it's just the way I get closer to God, you know? I, I feel <laughs> like, a lot better now. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> you set us free. <laughs> 
I, I, I mean, they call sitting on the throne for a reason. You know what I mean? True. Like it's your way to really communicate with Jesus. But like, <laughs> no. Unfortunately, when I think about opening up a line to God, I don't re- usually think of uh, you know that line being you know your anus. <laughs> my anus. <laughs> but <laughs> but hey, you know God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> this is true. Um, speaking speaking of, of of healthy BMs, um, I recently got a bidet, and and if you if you have any type of you know uh, uh, bowel issues, a bidet is a is a fucking game changer. <laughs> A bidet is the most underrated device in the Western world. You can get one on Amazon for sixty dollars <laughs> and attach it to your and, toilet. Or, or, and I don't recommend this uh, because I made this mistake. Or you could get one on eBay for fifteen. Hell and, yeah! Uh, <laughs> but you know what? When it comes to a bidet, let's go new. Let's, yeah, I think let's so. Let's go new. Don't, you know, you don't need to be buying second hand, second ass bidets. <laughs> So how do you think, do you think Squatch would use a bidet? I think he'd have to with all that hair. I think he'd have to, but I think his bidet is just where the current is strongest (laughs) uh, in the river, you know? So he's got like nature's bidet, uh, white water uh, bideting, you know, like he's just got like a white water raft, uh, you know, of an ass. So I think he... Or she or it. I don't want to like you know ascribe a gender. It's to, 2018. Yep. Yeah, it's 2018. But uh, yeah, I think, um, man, if you lived, I mean, because I think most Sasquatch sightings are somewhat close to like a water source. There always has to be water for anything to to really live, I guess. But um, so I would think that the river is probably the perfect bidet. Yeah, he goes down there, he finds a nice smooth stone, Why? works it out. <laughs> Why isn't there like a, a you know the Jack Links commercials where they're just fucking with Sasquatch for no reason? Um, why isn't there one where he's just washing his ass in the stream <laughs> and then they they go up and steal his beef jerky or something? I think you need to edit that one out too, and uh, you That's know another... send an email to the to the advertising company. <laughs> um, those commercials uh, are, are funny. It's like it's it's amazing. Like the last five years, there's really been an explosion of like Sasquatch everywhere. Yeah. Um, which is to me like, you know, a sign of the, uh, a sign of the times. Mm -hmm. I I think we're like real close to, to like Sasquatch being a thing that like everyone just understands is, you know, just a new form of ape or whatever that, um, that we finally were able to discover. But like, it does seem like those people, I always want Sasquatch to beat the shit out of those people in those commercials. I know. They're, he does most of the time, doesn't he? he? Usually at the end, he like throws a giant boulder at them or something. But it's yeah. like it's like the but tricks. He's being provoked. He, he is just minding his own goddamn business, yeah. eating his jerky, hanging out in the... No, I, maybe he doesn't have the jerky. Maybe I'm confusing that with the tricks rabbit well, where no, they're he, stealing think, from him. I think it's they eat the jerky and then decide to go fuck with Sasquatch. Oh, so the jerky gives them evil yeah. power. Or just just an evil idea. Jack yeah, Lynx. I'm always I'm always rooting for uh, Sasquatch to rip their head off or something <laughs> because it's like, what are you doing? Like, only I mean, I hope that people, I mean, because like in all honesty, today, like later today when I go out, like. I have been told by someone who has had like encounters with them like a while ago, someone who used to work for like the BFRO, a Bigfoot research organization. They used to like. And they probably still do like they organize like expeditions and stuff for people to go. But um, that like if you get close enough to see a Sasquatch, you don't want to see a Sasquatch. Like almost to the point where it's like it's not it, – it's like incredibly unsafe to be really close to one um, because they will like rip your body in half. Like I mean like they're just like essentially it's like – would you go behind the glass inside the glass encasement at the zoo yeah. to the silverback gorillas, like mm-hmm. and hang out? Um, like you wouldn't do that. So, um, so like in those commercials, I'm just like, oh, I just hope people don't think this is like. I hope it doesn't melt into like the idea of like, <laughs> oh, we should all just go out and look for Sasquatch. Let's get some jack slings <laughs> and go out into the woods today to look for Sasquatch for real, like those commercials. And then, you know, you show up and there's all these kids hanging from trees getting dried out. Like, so, you know, this is the beef jerky Sasquatch. Eats. Just like, you know, idiot teenagers <laughs> hanging, being sun dry, sun dried bros, like hanging from. <laughs> Hanging from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yeah. No, it's definitely like one of those things where they eat the beef jerky, then they're just like, let's do the thing where we make him piss himself. How about that? And it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's like Sasquatch does not have time for this shit. He's out there just hustling every day. Every day. <laughs> trying to get that Sasqu- shit. Yeah. I think people forget, too, when it comes to, like, wild animals. Like, they don't have a grocery store, bro. <laughs> like, they kill with their hands everything <laughs> they eat. You know what I mean? Like, that's a whole other way of living. When you actually have to get your own food, um, you know, we, we're pretty soft, you know, when it, when, when it, when it oh, comes yeah. to, like, you know, modern man. Um, what are you saying you know, that podcasters were not like the most like rough and tumble? <laughs> what are you talking about, Ryan? Bro, bro if, if like if Amazon takes more than two days to deliver something to me, I get pissed off. <laughs> and yeah, that, that's yeah. like an existential crisis I'm going to have for like yeah. the next two days. I mean, you guys didn't go out there and kill those microphones with your own hands in the wild <laughs> and bring them in. To... <laughs> they're just in the, they're in the stream, dude. They're like yeah. an eel <laughs> jumping through the stream. <laughs> Um, so another thing with Sasquatch, the different names for them. Um, uh, so the, the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, um, Skunk Ape. Yeah, Skunk Ape. That was the one I couldn't remember. Yeah. Why Skunk Ape? Because he smells, right? Well, but all fucking wild animals smell, don't they? No, but he stank. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, there must be a, you know, because it's swampy down there in Florida. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I think the skunk, the skunk Ape is, I'm pretty sure it's Florida. Uh, I know for sure if if it's not only Florida, it's definitely the South plus mm-hmm. Florida, but it's it's definitely in that area. So you know where things like are are more like the Everglades. So it's kind of got that like you know watery, you know like thick film on the water kind of vibe. So kind of like New I Jersey. Think, <laughs> maybe maybe yeah, it's New Jersey. Like Jersey. <laughs> kind of like the Jersey Shore. You, yeah. you didn't know that Snooky was a skunk ape. Um, <laughs> They're just really into waxing down there. She's actually a Sasquatch. <laughs> she's, she's a baby squatch. Uh, no no shit on Jersey, but fuck Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, congratulations to our cousin yes. Jen. She just had a baby in Jersey. In Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what was I gonna say? I, I just think, like, I mean, if I was down in Florida with no shower, I'd be skunk man. Yeah. They'd be, like, local hairy man walking around. You, you, you been to Florida much, Ryan? Yeah, I go to, um, I, there's a yoga studio in St. Pete okay. that uh, I've done a few shows at the last couple of years. It's called uh, Electric Body Electric Yoga Studio uh, in the Tampa St. Pete area, and it's uh, it's really awesome. It's really fun doing a, a stand up show in there because everybody in there is just kind of sitting on yoga mats with no <laughs> shoes on, and you know they're really into crystals and shit like that. Um, my favorite thing about doing like a show at a yoga studio is it's like everybody's in here because we used to be really fucked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like this was like everybody in here's got a secret. And, oh yeah. Uh, you know, so like, and we've all moved past it. So like, uh, you know, our past used to be like, just, you know, we used to just be maniacs. So, um, so like, it's a great audience for stand up. Um, you know, especially cause they're open to all kinds of, uh, you know, mystical and, and, yeah. and weird ideas, but that's mostly where I go in Florida. Um, my, Mom and stepdad are now in Fort Lauderdale. They just got there today, actually. Mm-hmm. I got a text from my mom. This is no joke. This morning, this is how I woke up. Um, I was up really late watching the movie Poseidon, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but no. I think it came out like five, six years ago at least. Um, if not longer, it's about a giant cruise ship that oh, yeah, gets yeah. a rogue wave. Um, and now they have to, you know, Kurt Russell has and a group of people are trying to get off the boat. Anyway, it's like, it's just really not worth your time, but, um, <laughs> but I can't, I have this really big problem where if I start watching anything, I have to finish it no matter yeah. how bad it is. And my girlfriend's like, let's just put on a bad movie and, you know, fall asleep. And I was like, you know how I am. And she You've puts on the side. Six minutes into the movie, she's asleep. And then two hours later, I'm just like, oh, my God, get off the boat. Um, (laughs) But I got a text. Anyway, I got a text message from my mom just today at 940 a.m. I was asleep. It said, just arrived at the house. Hallelujah. Like, as if driving was brand new. Like, <laughs> like, like she was walking on the moon and made it. Like, she was driving from Ohio to Florida because there's snow now. Because uh, they're, you know, retired now. Yeah. But they left like a week and a half ago. 
And like that's it's like the Oregon Trail. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> we lost two head of oxen on the way over, and your yeah. cousin got diphtheria. <laughs> <laughs> but we did eat at four star restaurants the whole way down. Get in a our couple... Jaguar. <laughs> uh, but like, uh, yeah. So they're in Fort Lauderdale. So who knows? Maybe I'll go see them. Uh, you know, over the winter. I'm not sure. But yeah. usually it's just St. Pete is where I hit where I head to, in Florida. Yeah, my my girlfriend's family, they're all snowbirds. Uh her her parents are are very soon to become become actually I think they're moving down to Florida is the plan. Um but uh, uh our our good friend Hosey, he uh who's been on the podcast, his parents go back and forth from Florida all the time. And I I guess like uh his dad after driving the car with uh with his mother like had to go to the hospital and his like blood pressure was like <laughs> ridiculously high like popped the blood vessel in his eye or some shit from just being stressed out in the car with her. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. She's a wonderful woman, but we should have her on the podcast. I don't know about that, man. We're gonna have to have that edit, but it. Yeah, seriously, you have, to have a kill switch for yeah. stuff that comes out of her mouth sometimes. <laughs> oh man, any any final thoughts on Squatch? I think that we should all try to be nice to Squatch. Like, give him, give him some space. Yeah. Give him some jerky. Give him some jerky. Leave it out for him and then fuck off. Yeah, don't seriously. don't act like if you give him some jerky, you're allowed to hang out with him suddenly. Yeah, don't uh, stay woke. Don't provoke. <laughs> uh, give Squatch some space. <laughs> Hell yeah. And on that note, we're moving on now to topic. 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 Number. Number. Number, number, number two. I'm having way too much fun watching trying to negotiate this yeah, setup right now. Since in a different <laughs> position. <laughs> that, oh, so this is my topic. Yep, this um, is. My topic is why aren't people talking about donuts more? Oh, That's a good fucking question. What's, what's like? What's the deal with donuts? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> why are pe- there's a donut mm. shop? It's 24 hours. I mean. People are forgetting that there are – I don't know how it is around the, the rest of the country, but I know most places, there are 24-hour donut shops. I mean this is like the you know, the hidden gem of every city. There's a donut shop right across the street from my apartment. I mean I could walk there in you know, five to seven minutes at the tops. Mm-hmm. They've got donuts 24 hours a day. They, they just incorporated ice cream into the store. So now you can oh, make no. donut ice cream sandwiches. Oh, no. <laughs> They've got, obviously, they got coffee, and I don't care what coffee they use. If it comes out of a donut shop, it's going to be good. Yep. And they've got Kino until two in the morning, <laughs> so you can go there, you can place some numbers, you can drink some coffee, you can eat some donuts, you can take your notebook, you can do some writing. Um, do why they have an apartment not- upstairs? Can I move There's in? There's no apartment upstairs. But if there was, oh, my God, that would be perfect. <laughs> Just imagine waking up every day smelling glazed. Like, <sighs> that would be a thing. But, like, people aren't – people are forgetting how wonderful donuts are. And, sure, they're like sugar bombs. I yeah. get it. It's just a bomb of sugar exploding inside your gut. But, I mean, I mean, are we going to five if – drugs anymore like we have to have something so like i don't know why people are just like forgot about donuts well, it I'll, seems like i'll say at least in new york um there is a different circular uh bagel food stuff that yeah that, that is a little bit more revered than the uh, donut. but i would say this time of year we drove over there was some nice fall foliage you know what we get up here is apple cider donuts that is true oh god yes Holy those motherfuckers shit, those they'll, get so you. they'll get you they'll get you I don't eat donuts very often, but I will put away like six of those. Yeah, I love apple cider and I mm-hmm. love donuts. I, I've never had an apple cider donut, but oh, I need amazing. one now. Oh, they're great! They're you so gotta like. Good. I don't know if they're gonna have them out in LA and stuff, but like on like farms and stuff up here upstate, you know, you go by, they'll have like cider for sale, and then they'll also have fresh cider donuts, and they're just yeah, they made them that morning and oh, <sighs> oh my god, can you imagine drinking it with cold or hot cider too? Oh. Like, that sounds amazing. Once a year, my neighbors growing up that live right behind us, and their son was, like, my best friend growing up until we were, like, you know, out of college. Um, his mom would make homemade donuts, and it was the best day of the year. Yeah, it's a good Because <laughs> when you have donuts that come, like, 
directly out of the oven. I think that's why people love Krispy Kreme when the light goes off so much because they're still hot. Yeah. yeah. Like, and you're like, this is the freshest thing I'm, I'm eating in the modern world, you know? Um, Krispy Kreme. That's not from my own kitchen, but like, it was, oh, it just sit up. I, oh, I, I mean, I can't even put into words <laughs> how good this was. As it, and they had a trampoline. So we'd just get loaded oh, up on donuts. Yeah. <laughs> we'd get all jacked up on sugar, and then we would just jump it out. And then we'd go back in, sugar load, come back out, jump it out, go back in, get jacked up, come back out, jump it out. I mean, it was the best. Uh, I mean, I need to start making Why have I never made homemade? I cannot believe i've never made donuts now like talking about this i why have i never made homemade donuts it's a it's a question we all have to ask ourselves every once in a while you gotta take a deep hard look in the mirror I and hate say baking. you hate baking yeah what are you what's wrong with you i don't like baking i don't like it either it's hard it's tough <laughs> it's tough you it's, gotta measure stuff i don't yeah. want to measure anything i'm a scientist and i don't even want to measure shit <laughs> <laughs> I think when it comes to donuts, though, I do have to say, like, when it comes to, like, shooting a bunch of juice, like, uh, not juice, but, like, uh, jam and stuff inside of them. Oh, yeah. Um, That's where it gets tricky. And, like, all the cream and all that. And, you know, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, and I know this. Okay. But, like, let's settle down. Let's settle down oh, on no, filling no, see, the I'm, donut up with a bunch of creamy shit. You know I, what I mean? I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on that. Um, a Boston cream donut is possibly... The pinnacle of donuts, in my opinion. I am team plain donut. I like I like a chocolate cake donut, and that's it. That's what I like. Okay, see, mm-hmm. this is going to be mm-hmm. even more unpopular. Oh, I'm not a big. I I don't really like chocolate. <gasps> oh, uh, I'm there with you. So, I mean, I like chocolate only if peanut butter is involved. Ooh, Hell usually. yeah, my brother. Like that, <laughs> that gets me that gets me interested. Now I'm listening. Now chocolate has a seat at the table, you know what I mean? As long as peanut butter vouched for it. Right. But like, you know, like okay, chocolate can come to my daughter's wedding. Yeah. Uh only if it's the plus one of peanut butter. Exactly. But I'll tell you, when it comes to the donut though, I'm a purist, you know what I mean? The donut's even the donut is either good enough as it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Or you got to throw it's like a loaded baked potato. Yeah. Nobody I, likes potatoes. People like bacon and sour cream and cheese and chives. It's like an edible spoon at that point. A donut doesn't need to be a spoon for other foods. A donut should be so jacked with sugar and whatever else that you don't need this other shit spilling out of it and getting on your nice dockers. Like in this <laughs> scenario, everybody who eats a Boston cream pie donut or something is wearing dockers. I don't know why. And you don't look like a dockers guy, but. I, I don't wear Doctors, like, but, yeah, but, but, wear but doctors. strangely enough, whenever I have a Boston cream, <laughs> I, just I, throw on a pair. I got I got to run down, run they down have, to the store and pick one up. They have they have them right there at the shop. Well, yeah, they got yeah. a pair of white tennis well, shoes for when, you. <laughs> when they when they bring in donuts into the office, like they they, they bring in a box and it's the plain donuts and the Boston cream underneath. It's Boston a couple, cream, a couple a couple of pair of Dockers, and, and a couple ca- pairs of cargo shorts and new and, and an insulin uh, an insulin <laughs> shot insulin yeah. shot too. I really but wish. To be fair. To be fair, the the jelly filled donuts, you know, but essentially this is just like the same thing as a Boston cream, but with a different flavor on the inside. Like mm-hmm. the jelly filled that has like a tart, like raspberry jelly inside. Like that combination of like the sweet and the tart, as long mm-hmm. as it's not just like too much to where it all just kind of squirts out when you bite into it. Like uh, that is pretty, that's pretty damn good. But the problem is, I can't have more than like one of those. And when it comes yeah. to like anything, I want like I want quantity. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, uh, how do you how do you feel about munchkins like donut holes, the little guys? Ooh, that's oh, interesting. God, yeah. Bring them. <laughs> bring, <laughs> bring them to the party. Bring I love donut holes. Oh god damn, I love donut holes. Um, donut holes, they're like the finger food of the glutton, you know, like <laughs> if I was a king in like any kingdom in the Middle Ages, I would just constantly have a large golden goblet. <laughs> like we're talking like a 75 ounce goblet, just 
filled with donut holes constantly. People would be like, should we talk to King Ryan? Don't yet. He hasn't had his holes, you know, like, <laughs> like you got to put his hole in his ask, holes. Like, Oh, you better not ask him for a favor unless you bring him some holes. Like people would be making like the best donut holes in the world to bring me just to ask me for like a, a break on taxes or something. I love a donut hole. God. Oh, that's a, that's a good call. A I really hole. wish that we had the video going right now so I could see your eyes. <laughs> I feel like you may have like a full on like glee, like glare in your eyes. You might be possessed by the devil of donuts. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I do get a little too excited about this shit because like, I can't, do drugs anymore so it's like you know like this is like my juice now you know <laughs> i love the king idea because then you have like a little peasant boy coming in he's limping and he's like my lord my lord please they've come and they've killed my whole family the warring tribes have come and then you're like boy what have you why do you come into my kingdom without bringing me some donut holes bring me my holes boy it's like, but sir they they killed my family they stole our oven <laughs> <laughs> like the, the worst thing to me wouldn't be the plague it'd be like a shortage of glaze <laughs> like we're out of glaze there's no more glaze and i would just, i would probably hate myself no we go uh, to war we take over the next town and take their fucking glaze you know that's a good point that's a good point we'll we'll invade the coconut kingdom you know like where they where everything is just it doesn't snow it just flakes coconut. for too long they have lorded the desiccated coconuts over us for too long we have been in the shadow of the coconut tree my brothers take up arms now bring me the cinnamon warriors I'll tell you what, you get some cinnamon and you get some sugar, you get them dancing together. Oh, boy. That is something to watch out on the dance floor. Those two, they're making magic together. Uh, I used to love just the cinnamon sugar on a piece of bread toasted with some butter. Oh, yeah. You, know, you, you lay the bed down with the butter and then you let the cinnamon and the sugar make sweet love on top of it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'll tell you, like, you do that on a donut and now you're now you're like – I, I cannot refuse anything you ask me. Um, <laughs> like while I'm eating like a cinnamon sugar donut, if, if it's anywhere close to being fresh, like I cannot refuse the request of anyone. And that is like my daughter's wedding. That's like, I was going to say, you come to me uh, on this the day I eat the cinnamon donut. <laughs> and you know, I cannot refuse any request. Like I seriously cannot. There's only a couple things in my life that have ever made me say out loud, ask me for anything you want right now because I, I cannot refuse you. Um, and, you know, most of those situations are a little too, uh, uh, you know, I guess adult to, me to mention. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but a cinnamon, a, a really good donut is one of those moments. You know, I, I, I think that Twin Peaks did a lot for donut culture. I think that... Oh, shit, Yeah. I think that Twin Peaks. I cannot watch well, that is, show is it, without donuts well, around I th me. I thought it was more pie, though, isn't it? No, it's pie. It's donuts. Yeah. It's, it's all diner. Yeah. It's all diner yeah, culture. Because they would bring like all the donuts into like the police station conference room. Mm -hmm. That's where all the donuts were, right? And then the pie was always at the diner. Yeah, at the double R um, diner. Um, yeah, and uh, with Kyle McLaughlin, he would always, uh, you know, be eating the pie, like, and just like. Very porn, very porn like uh, oh, yeah. scenes of oh, yeah. pie. And like all the, like, there would be like 12 boxes of donuts in there. And it's like, there's four people here, bro. <laughs> like, so I get what you're saying. It's like, um, yeah, the donuts, uh, Twin Peaks. I, I haven't finished the new season yet, still, which I can't believe. But uh, it's okay. I'm I there with I, you. My my producer right now is giving me a fucking look because I'm still, I, I left off at like episode five or something like that. I think I got to like episode 10, like to almost to where, uh, what's it? Why can't I remember his name? Uh, Kyle McLaughlin. McLaughlin. yeah, his character's oh, uh, name. Cooper. Uh, Cooper. Um, Cooper almost is able to like, spoiler alert. He's almost able to like speak a word Yeah. at this point, which is a weird choice for me like that, the whole thing that's been happening. But, um, Jones. but then the times, the Tom Sizemore thing really roadblocked me on like being able to like, get keep watching the rest of the season because that guy's just such a scumbag in real life like so i'm kind of like blocked on tom sizemore being a part of uh part this of fantasy the, the universe season. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, you know, I mean, that's a whole other discussion. We're, we're, we're not going to get into that. But, like, the uh, I do, but that show is so fucking good. I oh, just, yeah. I mean, I love David Lynch, uh, the way, the way his mind works. Well, because a lot of the stuff he, like, does, you know, like, transcendental meditation for, and it has a very dreamlike quality to a well, lot he, of he it. He said in interviews that some of the, some of his scenes are just straight up dreams, and they don't mm-hmm. have a point. He just came to him one time in a dream, and he's like, yep, yeah, I'm going to film that. But you can feel yeah. the vision of it, and that's maybe why it has so much, like, you know, um, like, appetite based stuff where it's like the people when they eat it's like yeah. very visceral and when they drink it's very visceral yeah. when they smoke cigarettes it's very visceral yeah. i mean what else is there in life really other than eat sleep sex i mean that's really those are like the three things we do yep. and uh are the th- three things we need yep. mm-hmm. um you know as as animals like there's really nothing else we truly need i wish we could go back in time and talk to the people who were sitting around the campfire and like you know what we should do we should like fill our lives with stuff <laughs> that we don't need to do um you know because all this eat sleeping and sexing is just too wonderful <laughs> um you know i eat when i'm hungry i sleep when i'm tired and i have sex when i'm horny like <laughs> Life should be more difficult. And it's like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> like, why can't we go back to just the eat, sleep, sex? I mean, maybe we still can. I believe we can. Dude, it's the, it's the archaic revival. Terrence McKenna, man. We're going back to it. Yeah, I mean, I'm on board. Just as long as we can keep donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be donut holes. That'll be the that'll be the one, like, decadent <laughs> thing, thing of, from modern civilization yeah. that remains... But like it but becomes a sacrament, it becomes money. Well, no. Yeah, I was gonna say that that is gonna become the currency. <laughs> you got well, it doesn't have to. It can just, donut holes. It could become our god instead. Yeah. Okay. How about we just we we worship okay. the great almighty hole? Uh, <laughs> and he fills the hole in you. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Mm. I love it. <laughs> oh shit. All right. And on that note, we're moving on now to. He's gonna do the thing. Do the thing. Topic <laughs> oh, number no. go. Ooh, three? Three? Three. 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 Haven't, f- Ooh. Haven't fucked up a number in a while. That's good. It's a good sign. It means that I'm not, uh, you know, thinking about the numbers as much. I'm thinking about the cast. Okay. I'm topic number three today. <laughs> Sorry, that was the inner workings of my brain, guys. Sorry. Something just really crawled out of the <laughs> lid, it showed itself, and then like slithered back into the skull there. <laughs> Cast. <laughs> All right. So, uh, also uh, in reference to your newest stand up album, you Which, talk. Uh, by the way, folks, if you haven't listened to it, listen to it. It's great. Free love. It's losers. Very, very listen good. to it. Um, okay. So. What uh, I wanted to talk about, you mentioned uh, something about the sing- singularity and the idea that, you know, robots start to replicate themselves and they start to awaken. And you said, you know, we're, we are the robots that we've been bi- uh, chasing this whole time. You know, the, the idea that humans are perhaps robots. And um, I right now I'm a grad student. And I, I work uh, in a neuroscience lab and I don't really see a huge... Uh, separation from humans and robots on like a physiological level. To me, humans are robots. And I'd just like to, you know, pat around in that idea for a little bit. Well, that's interesting because the, uh, the whole, yeah, I mean, I guess when it boils down to electricity, right? Um, like, I don't know, and, and granted, I didn't go to school for any of this, and I don't know as much as, you know, someone like yourself who, you know, who studies and, and you know, works with it. But when it comes to... It's all for there was shit. A, yeah, I, I don't know as much as I should. Don't worry about it. I don't read. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, there was a radiologist who, like, I think I referenced him in the joke, but there was a radiologist I talked to in Chicago who talked about how they were really shocked by the amount of electricity they found at, like, the... You know, I don't know. Is it this not Cellul- subatomic? Cell- cellular cell- level, I guess. Level. Yeah, because I don't think radiologists go subatomic, do they? <laughs> well, um, when they get in the magic school bus, they yeah, do. The really good ones do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so like, there's like, like, we were shocked by how much electricity was there, and to me, that was like, oh, so we we run on electricity. I mean, oh what, yeah. What, is there what else is there to know i mean what we want to call it energy we want to call it life force uh prana um you know our essence uh what is our soul um 
So I don't know. It's pretty interesting to think that maybe our consciousness is also just like a, you know, a cloud of electricity that is sentient in some kind of way. Um, I I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, so there, there are areas in your body called nerve plexuses. Okay. And so like, like a lot of people know, like solar plexus is the one like over your heart and they're just basically bundles of nerves. Okay. And if like, okay, so this is going to take a second here. Um, okay. So y'all know how an electromagnet works. drink real quick. <laughs> y'all know how a uh, electromagnet works. So basically you have a current that is in, or a magnet that is inducing a current in a wire. So you spin the magnet, you make a current in the wire, you charge the battery or whatever. Um, it also works the opposite way. It's called magnetic induction. Okay. So the idea is you have a magnetic field that comes from an electrical current. So for every electrical current in the direction surrounding uh, around that current, you have a magnetic field that's produced. All these nerve plexuses produce a magnetic field around your body. So like the idea of like auras and stuff like that is actually not that weird from like a physics perspective. You do have fields surrounding your body and they do come from specific areas uh, in your body because of these nerve plexuses. All right, I'm done, guys. Thanks. <laughs> well, I mean, that all that shit is really, like, really fascinating to me because I think it was uh, – God, who was it? Sir George Frazier. Uh, I'm trying to remember. He wrote like uh, – uh, it's like compendium on like all the history of like religions and stuff. I mean, okay. it's an old book, but, uh, anyway, one of the, one of the things in the book is the idea, it's a quote from either him, him or, or someone else that he's using. I apologize. I don't have the exact source, but it is, um, you know, science is just, or, or magic is just science yet defined, uh, right. or not yet defined. So like, and like electromagnetism is the perfect example of that. Cause before we knew what electromagnetism was, it was like, these are magic rocks. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, magnets, how do they work? <laughs> yeah, dude. ICP yes. just recently discovered magnetism and they're doing yeah, great. Yeah. Oh my God. Someone who was it? Uh, Austin Lucas. Uh, I don't know if you know Austin, but he's a great musician, uh, like Americana kind of rock. Okay. Uh, anyway. Um, He's amazing, but uh, he we were on tour together last year, and he was playing. I've never listened to ICP ever, and so he was playing me ICP like, and we were just, oh, it was amazing. It was just like so, <laughs> like the idea. Some of these, I just I really enjoyed like a, you know a couple small looks into uh, the ICP catalog, but um, but I, would I do love to just like is. go to one of their shows. I don't like their music. I just love to just be. Well, just in go that. go as an anthropologist. Yeah. Take a notebook. You know where where your your specs, and then you know have your little notepad. Nobody will beat you up for looking like a nerd. No, no way. Yeah, it is. It does seem crazy that they were not cleared of being a gang. <laughs> yeah, that's like, fucking. That ridiculous. was. That was so insane to me. But, um, yeah, I do, I do think a lot of this stuff, like auras, uh, I think uh, telekinesis uh, or psychokinesis and, you know, or clairvoyance and all this kind of communication with one without words. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we already do that. We already, you know, people are like, that's crazy. You're, you're, you're crazy for believing that this is possible. And it's like, well, you know, body language is mm-hmm. a thing. You know, and so there's ways to communicate without the spoken word that we already do. And actually, it's like I think a lot of people will say that the you know an overwhelming majority of our communication is nonverbal. Oh, already. I mean, absolutely. So, I mean, think about when you're inside and you're feeling pent up, and all of a sudden you walk outside into like an open area. The difference that you feel, like in your body, like. There's no reason why having the walls close to you should make you feel any particular way, like in your body. Like you may feel it like in your sight or whatever, you know, you're closed in. But when you walk outside and you feel that like feeling where you, you kind of feel, you know, the, the, I don't know, feelers, like maybe your psychic feelers sp- uh, spreading out. But like, you know, it, the psychic stuff happens all the time. Like you think of somebody, they send you a text message, you know, you see those synchronicities all the time. And I don't yeah. think that it's that physics is getting real wiggity these days. They're getting uh, pretty crunchy, I would say. So like this stuff is not that far, <laughs> you know, out of the realm of possibility. I just never yeah, heard crunch, somebody, crunch, baby. Yeah. I've never heard somebody describe physics as crunchy. No, dude, I saw, yeah. I saw physics at the fish uh, concert this week in Albany, man. They sold out the times union. It was just all the physicists. <laughs> the U Albany <laughs> physics department was there, baby. I love it because, um, 
you know, to think about it, like in the context of this, like, let's say like this robot idea, right? Like you're inside all day and then you get outside and there's the sun, right? And now, now, I mean, everybody knows sun is good for us, you know, vitamin D, all that shit, it like recharges you, makes you feel better. It's like, that is us. I mean, we're a camcorder or we're just a battery and now we're being used, right? We're using ourselves. And now we have to go get plugged back into the wall charger. Mm -hmm. And that is the sun. So essentially we're these like free floating robots that are now self-sustaining that um, we worry about robots being able to, you know, make more robots on their own. It's like, mm -hmm. well, we think, that shit out and not only that now we know how to tweak ourselves mm -hmm. on a genetic level um you know so which is becoming increasingly terrifying for a lot of people yeah. uh myself included when it comes to the elitists and like you know other stuff it's like well who gets the who gets to do all this stuff well it's Jeff the rich Bezos. people really <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly so but like when it comes to the idea that we have to go outside and get recharged we're happier when we exercise. So it's like, you know, when your when your car battery is running low, um, it's like it's good to have your car running. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it kind of recharges your car battery. So in the same way, like when your human battery is low, if you go for like a long walk or like if you go running. Right. You know, it's better for you uh, than just sitting around. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're like, you're recharging and, and these are just common words and like that we all use like, Oh, I got to recharge the battery. And it's like, we've been saying that for years and maybe it, it's a little more literal than we've ever considered. Cause we like to think of this like clear separateness between us and a robot. Right. Mm -hmm. When in fact we are maybe, you know, just depending on how you frame it in your mind, it's like, no, we, we just are robots. I mean, we already are what we consider to be a robot. I mean, I don't know. I'm into all that stuff, man. I'm into crystals and like, you know, charging with crystals and cr charging crystals and then using charged crystals to like help me feel better or do things because we've got crystals. To me, we are just a foundation of rocks which is what our skeleton is. People are like, oh, you're into crystals? I'm like, yeah, dude, crystals are into me. <laughs> I mean, I've got a skeleton, bro. Like, that is just a crystal, a, gi a giant crystal grid inside my body, and this is just a flesh inner tube that, like, helps me carry my crystals around. Um, you know, so it's like... <laughs> The one way to look at it, I guess. Yeah. Dude, we yeah. got to get the so, hippies to like flex on people like rappers do. You got to get like the rose quartz <laughs> grills. <laughs> and like you're like rolling up. You got like a like, I don't know, like a jade Glock. You just pull it out. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I've seen stuff like, at music festivals and stuff yeah. like like there's things like called like crystal pistols. And they're just like a big ass piece of quartz and a thing that's like shaped like a pistol. I don't know what it does, but I don't want to I don't want to find <laughs> out. Yeah, you don't want to be on the wrong end of that. <laughs> that seems like a really interesting uh, use of something that is beautiful and yeah, you're you kind of reversing benign. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, that's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's like, uh, like if a kid had a like, this is a bad example. I should stop myself, but I'm not going to. That's <laughs> like if somebody's somebody's make a wish was to beat the shit out of a kid at school, <laughs> and so then like their favorite. And then, like, their favorite MMA fighter came and just beat the shit out of somebody. And it's like, this was my make-a-wish. You know, this kid is just bloodied on the, on the playground. Like, it's like a misuse of funds uh, to, uh, like, have a crystal, have a quartz gun fashioned. But, uh... I, I mean, okay, so, like, thinking about, like, robots, so what do we define a robot as? Something that accomplishes a task autonomously, right? Like a yeah, machine that does that? What the fuck is the difference between that and a and a human? Humans are just more complex robots. Like on a molecular level. Like okay, so you might say, well, humans are different from robots because we produce, you know, we generate proteins, we self-replicate, we we renew ourselves and we eat food to make that happen. Proteins on a molecular level are basically just like strings with different kinds of magnets on them because like that's how protein interactions work. Like one part of the protein may be the catabolic site attracts its targets and it does the the enzymatic re reaction or whatever okay that is no different than if you put like marbles in solution with magnets or you know ball bearings with some magnets you bring it together and then it does something chemically but the, it's just like we're made out of fucking legos there's really no difference between that and us you know we are we're just these very complicated computers that you grow 
in someone's uterus. Like that's the only difference is that you yeah, have it's like the, uh, yeah, it's like the incubator. I, I do think that the idea of transhumanism too, which is, uh, gaining steam. And we kind of talked about it briefly just a second ago, but it's mostly kind of like an option of the elite at this point, but, or the, of the rich and wealthy, but, um, it's not a new idea. I mean, the iron lung was a thing from a long time ago, Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, insulin pumps inside people's uh, bodies, Um, you know, like transplants, organ transplants, and now like uh, artificial organs and Mm -hmm. and limbs and things like that. Um, I think that is evidence of our interchangeability, I guess might be a word. I don't know if that's a real word or not, but the idea that we can use things from our environment to supplement our own bodies or to even replace things in ourselves uh, shows how interchangeable we are. And just like you said, how essentially we are just robots or Legos of this particular uh, this particular planet. And so we can use anything from this planet almost to kind of just supplement or replace things of our own body. And th- the only thing that hangs me up on all this is consciousness. Yep. Right. And well, yeah, so that's the one thing that I believe is separates us from one from is the, the other. Yeah, but but not even so much as much as like I believe in the global consciousness concept mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, the global consciousness project by Dr. Roger Nelson is amazing, um, who did a lot of work over at the Pear Lab uh, in Princeton and uh, which I believe the TV show Fringe that was on FX mm-hmm. um, was based on the work, a lot of the work, at specifically that lab and other places like the Duke parapsychology department and stuff like that um, at Duke University. But um it's, it's, uh, it's amazing that like the consciousness also is so connected. It's it's almost like the cloud. We're all yep. part of the cloud and yeah, we have somehow we've developed a separate or an individuality within that, mm-hmm. but it's still the same operating system and we're all just different laptops. Maybe, oh you yeah. Know what I mean? Or like radios, you know, we're, yeah. we're all, your brain is, I mean, like I was saying with the induction thing before, if you if so if I have a magnetic field being produced by my brain because of the electrical activity in my brain, that magnetic field can then induce current electricity in your brain to make something happen. So that's like an idea of like telekinesis or, or um uh, telepathy. Okay. And then, you know, the idea of a global consciousness is totally there as well, because if your brain is able to pick up on signals moving around in a field around your head. There's no, it's like an antenna and a radio. Your head, your head's the antenna, the, um, which I'm gonna call it the co- global consciousness would be then the radio waves coming off and you transcribe them into your brain. You just don't, it's just not right in front of your eyes. That's the difference is that you're not seeing it, you know? Yeah. And I think that's, uh, you know, take that a little bit further. You have, you, you got people who are walking around to shortwave radios. You got people walking around on AM. You got people walking around on FM. <laughs> you got CB people walking around, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you know, there's all these different, like, you know, essentially dimensions or realities that people are tapped into. And, you know, and the real challenge for us in the modern age is how do we communicate across different frequencies? Um, which, you know, I think, you know, our country specifically right now is a really clear example. There's like, you know, people are operating on very different frequencies. And how do we make the connection that, uh, you know, you know, there's commercials on both of these and they're right. selling us shit we don't need. Right. You know, you know, that, that there's common ground. I mean, it's still just radio. But um, we need to so do- it's like that's that's the beautiful challenge is to like, how can we, you know, all tune into the same thing and, and realize that, uh, you know, we're all headed somewhere, um, together. Um, and I don't know where that is, but like, it's, it's a group effort. And so like, it's, it's pretty fascinating to think about. Um, and I, I'm pretty cool to try to, you know, even have this kind of self-awareness is mind blowing. Oh yeah. Being, being a computer that knows you're a computer that wants everyone else to know that their computers is, is a, is a weird spot to be in cosmically. Yeah, a, yeah, a little bit of existential crisis. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> for sure. 
definitely. Yeah, gonna... I mean, and when we and when we see the movies, and when we see like an android wake up in the movies and realize yeah. that they're an android and didn't realize they're an android, we're sitting there watching it. Like, come on, man, just click over. Mm-hmm. You're a robot. Yeah. Just accept mm-hmm. it. Move yeah. on. Come on, you know, and go with it. And now live your life. And uh, so it's like for us, it's that easy to be like, hey, robot, you're awake now. Just accept it and mm-hmm. live your life. Yeah. Welcome so to it's the like, club, why dude. don't we? Yeah, welcome to the so so for us it should be that simple almost like okay you know well I guess I guess I'm a I've been a robot this whole time doesn't change my experience I guess other than just the knowledge of knowing that this life what I thought it was it's just it now it's just defined differently but it doesn't mean it changes like my day to day experience in any way whatsoever yeah I mean um, I still like donut holes I still enjoy a nice no cup of cider you know yeah. This this is a this is a donut hole loving robot over here. Uh, this computer needs a milkshake. <laughs> Fill me with sweets. <laughs> oh shit! So, so what, what do you think, guys? Want to? Yeah, let's wrap it on up, Ryan. Thank up? you so much yeah, for dude, coming on. Thanks, thanks so for much. getting thanks for getting weird with us, yeah, buddy. Man. Oh yeah, definitely. This was fun. I'm glad we got weird. Um, yeah. That you know, if we can get weird talking about donuts and uh, oh, yeah, Sasquatch and milkshakes and, and robots, I, you know, I'm I'm on I'm on board with that. Uh, so um, so Ryan, I want to run down like your your uh, your tour dates, and uh, and uh, do another plug for the the uh, album. The album, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll be at the Comedy Bar in Chicago. That's the 16th, 17th, and 18th of November. So in like three weeks, or actually in like a month from now. And then in uh, the end of November, I'll be uh, doing some uh, some shows in Denver and Fort Collins, I believe, in Boulder area. That's like the 28th through the 2nd of December, I believe those dates are. Um, and then the 21st and 22nd of December, I'll be at Wiley's Comedy Club in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and that's pretty much it for the rest of the year right now. My website, ryansingercomedy.com has, uh, you know, a tab that just says tour. So click on the tour section and like all my dates will be on a Google calendar. Um, you can, uh, you know, find info there. And also my, my album free love, which is free. Please do not buy it. Please, please, please do not pay for it. Yeah. Don't be a narc. Uh, (laughs) Don't be a narc. Feel free to rate it and review it if you want. That'd be cool. Um, but please do not buy it on iTunes or Amazon. (laughs) Download it for free from my website. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, you know, enjoy and, you know, pass, pass, burn, you know, or burn, burn, pass, I guess, uh, (laughs) you know, pass that thing around. I will have free physical copies when I'm on the road too, for people oh, wonderful. Um, cool. to hand out at shows. But, um, yeah, just pass it around. I want it to like be passed around like Napster still real, um, <laughs> like a thing that was like, you know, illegal almost. But, um, so yeah, my full blessing on just like sending it as a, like a zip file to people or whatever, just passing it around. It's also on Spotify too and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. yeah. Oh, and the podcast too, Me and Paranormal You. If you like to get wiggity like we did on the last segment, you're definitely going to like <laughs> yeah. Me and Paranormal You. Oh, no doubt. I'm coming up on uh, my 400th episode. Yeah, I was so, looking like, at that's your catalog. Exciting. You got a, got a bunch of episodes. Oh. Yeah, so we're coming up on 400, and uh, so I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, other cool things happening, like in the paranormal slash comedy world, hopefully I'll be able to, uh, you know, announce to people later, too, like trying to melt those two worlds, you know, in bigger ways that reach uh, larger audiences as well, coming up soon. Hell yeah, yeah man. Very cool. Thanks again, Ryan. Um, and folks, if you're still listening, uh, uh, thanks for listening. And, you know, like, be nice to each other. Be nice to the robots. Be nice, you goddamn robots.